Yo, it's time to step into the business bubble. All yeah. right. Cheers to you, man. Cheers. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. My we've first been podcast. Your first podcast. Officially. And we've been planning this for a little bit as well. Yes, Let's, bro. let's start with the word compromise. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Trigger word. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was so okay. good. Yeah. No, I learned a lot for sure. <laughs> yes. Well, there's a couple of things that I really want to dive into today. Yes. Uh, everything from, you know, obviously the show, um, you know, male masculinity and all yeah. of those things and then also what's next so for sure um, but there's one thing that you said on the finale and I actually wrote this down because I thought this was really pr- this was really beautiful okay. so you said if these tears could say something it would say it was so hard but you've done it you put it all on the line you pushed yourself you tested your limits you stayed true to who you are and then you said I'm the most crying bachelor on the show <laughs> and then, well I, the way I saw it is this like I watched the whole season. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And what you said there, it actually changed my perspective of the whole show. Mm. So I watched it all one way. And then after you said that, it changed my whole perspective. Um, Because it was like, at first, like a reality TV show. And then I realized for you, it was was more like a marathon. It was, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. So so what, like, in terms of that being a marathon, like, what was, I guess, we'll start here. What was the first thing that you did when you you got home? Oof. Wow. The first thing I did, I think I hit, oh yeah, first thing I did was my best friends came to pick me up in the airport Mm -hmm. and my head was spinning and I didn't know even where to start to debrief five weeks and get them up to speed. Um, and then yes, we went. I think we went to my favorite restaurant in Bondi. Yeah, nice. <laughs> just to eat some South American food and just try to feel like home again. Yeah. Um, and yes, um, that was the first thing I did. Was just trying to find something of familiarity as well of my normal life. You know, not being a bubble where everything is absolutely done for you. You know, makeup, yeah. makeup um, stylist, um, bodyguards, and things like that. Yeah. Does that change? the the whole dating kind of feel because you know in dating you want to be honest yeah right? you want to be real but when yeah. you got all these stars you got as you mentioned 150 people on set like car, Ye- crew. Uh, yeah I heard that there was like in the totality of the show not yeah. only on set but like everyone that worked on the show was or something around 150 people yeah. yeah do you think that the show makes dating unrealistic then <laughs> Look, I don't think I will be doing pretty woman dates, <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, I think it it doesn't make unrealistic. If anything, I actually look forward to being just normal dates again, you know, instead of everything set up for you, everything planned for you, everything um, like, you know, and don't get me wrong, I'm so thankful for that. I love that I got to be a part of that and uh, had so many memories that I've shared in those incredible dates. But I actually look forward to take back the ownership of dates that I plan, that I want to do, you know, um, and just doing things that I think align more to who I am and potentially the person that I meet as well, what she wants to do. Because, you know, if you take someone that doesn't like swimming to uh, underwater <laughs> photo shoot <laughs> <laughs> might not have been the best idea but uh, yeah. yes it was it doesn't make it unrealistic I think it's just anything um, it was definitely an incredible experience I love it that I've done it um, and yes I'll leave it there well when you are when you are going on these dates right they they plan them like what you're going to do and, yeah. and where you want to go right Yeah. if you were to do another date now where would you, I mean, from, from obvi- obviously you guys, well, you know exactly what they've done and how, what works. Yeah. Where would you take the next girl? Oh, man. Uh, look, I think I, I really like doing an activity together. Yeah. Because... Uh, Listen to this single, guys. <laughs> this? this is like real life, you know. Oh, exactly. from, a, from a failed batchy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so definitely take everything on board that I say. <laughs> but I think I love doing an activity. And it could be anything from like grabbing a coffee and going for a coastal walk. Yeah. Because um, when you do an activity together, it takes a little bit of... It takes the pressure away of 
sitting across the table and just keeping on asking each other questions, yep. which can be so like interviewee and not cool at all. Like yep. I, no one likes that. Yep. But if you do an activity, um, there is something common you're already doing and I, there's something bonding about that. I actually heard a, a relationship um, researcher, a PhD actually that works for Hinge saying that the best dates are the ones that you actually do an activity together mm. instead of just sitting across the table. I've heard the thing as well. If you take a girl to a horror film, if she doesn't like horror, <laughs> she's gonna hold your hand. Hold your hand. Naturally, just draw more towards you. Yes. It's like, oh, that's you know. But if if you're like me and I don't like horror films as well, mm. yeah, I'm I'm out as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave her there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm glad you enjoying this movie. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'll I'll catch you afterwards. We'll, yeah. we'll have supper after. So on the flip side, then, so that was after you got back. Yeah. Um, when before you jumped on the show, did you watch like? different seasons did you watch other dating shows did you what did you do yes yeah, so um definitely never been a major i don't watch reality tv at all so what happened was when i got the offer to be in the show i said oh maybe i actually should do some homework so um from getting the offer into i guess saying yes um it took me like two to three weeks and then I went and I watched the last season, which was going to be this kind of similar format, three guys, just to have an idea what I was getting myself into. Um, it was hard to watch because I could see the drama, I could see the things that would make me uncomfortable. Um, so I was aware of that. Um, but at the same time, I wonder, okay, the way um, I've dated before, and I know the show says I've never had a, a girlfriend but that doesn't mean I've been on relationships before I have just not long um, uh, long relationships um, but yes I, I, I did do my homework to yeah. see a little bit what I was getting myself into and definitely felt scary felt like oh do I really want to do this <laughs> But something inside of me is like, oh, what have you got to lose? You That's, know, like yeah. you go meet some hopefully incredible people, um, have an experience, um, and if anything, shake up a little bit my uh, my world. So I was excited for that. Do you feel like your world has been shaken up? Oh, 100%. Flipped upside down? <laughs> oh, God. So what's your perspective going into the show and then now getting out of the show? This is a loaded question. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, gosh. Getting into the show, I think I was quite naive as well with the whole idea of taking risks. And obviously, I was a broken record saying that all the time. And because it was true, I was definitely putting myself outside of my comfort zone. And um, and I wanted to do it. I wanted to explore the ways of dating. Um, so I did it. Uh, now, outside of the show, I think I've learned um, quite a lot. Yeah, uh, I've learned what I'm looking into someone and the things that I should be in the lookout even before getting uh, deeper with someone. Yeah, like values, aligned values, you know, things like that. Um, I kind of thought, oh, that might not be a big deal, but I was wrong. Um, and then I feel like as well, growing up in a Christian family, of course, and trying to do um, dating in a good way that I wouldn't lead anybody on mm-hmm. I would always go on a date and if I didn't feel like a butterfly or anything like strong I would be like oh let's not waste anyone's time let's just you know cut it out um, and I would not go on a second date and what I feel like the the experience taught me is that if you only have something like I enjoy your presence this is good that's enough to go on a second date mm. um, and then by going on a second date then things can progress slowly, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm way more open right now to um, not put that whole pressure on myself that yeah. I'm trying to find a wife. No, I'm just trying to find someone that I enjoy spending time with. Yes, that we connect, that we that we can make memories. So I feel like I took so much pressure out of dating yeah. now, and it became a, something way more lighter for me now. Do you think like 
us Christians put too much pressure on dating? Oh, bro, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, Christian dating is a whole nother topic. Uh, yeah, but uh, It's a whole nother app as well. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. And if you go read the comments, it's so funny. People are like, what is Wes doing this show? You're like, you should be finding someone in the church. I'm like, I agree. You know, like, you are right. I am, I'm wrong. I did this to myself. I take full responsibility. <laughs> you know, like I take full responsibility for what I've done. Um, but yeah, I think um, this, uh, in uh, obviously, as we trying to follow Jesus, we love Jesus, and we the last thing we want is to hurt someone. Yeah. But we need to grasp and come to peace with the fact that relationships are a risk-taking endeavor. Mm. Um, that's a big lesson I walked away with. And there is no way to try to meet someone without the potential of hurting. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just have to deal with it and, and that's part of life. Do you think that when we as Christians jump into a relationship, the first thing we think about is, oh, am I going to get married to this person? I don't know if it's the first thing, but it's definitely there. The it's thoughts. There. Yeah. I think the thoughts are definitely there that you're like looking for. You, you don't want to mess around. You yeah. don't want to uh, waste anyone's time. But also we can sh sabotage ourselves by having s those thoughts so early on. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas I guess, yeah, I guess that's a funny thing. Like how you can't generalize, hey, like you can't. I know people that literally looked in the first time they, they saw each other. They're like, yeah, you're my person. You're going to, mm. we're going to marry Christians and non-Christians. Um, and I know people that were not into each other at all. And then they started dating and then the feeling grew and then they married. That's me and Yana. Oh yeah, so tell us, like, how right. did it, how did it go for you guys? Well, well, we well, I was going through a, uh, I was going through a season where I, I had a breakup, and yeah. then I was looking after you know the the youth community as well, and yeah. and and in worship as well, and there's just a lot of things going on, and I just needed help, right? Yeah. Just trying to carry all these things by myself. Yeah, you know the male ego. You kind of like you know what I can do it. I can yes. get over it. I'll I'll fight through it. Yes, um, and it's very Asian style as well, right? Don't you think? Like I'll just keep going through it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Keep pushing. Yeah. yeah. Carl does that all the time. He keeps pushing. Keep going. <laughs> but then at the same time, I thought, oh, you know, I need, I really need help. Right. And then so my past, oh, well, my leader at that time, Brian Siawada. Do you remember Brian? No way. Yeah. Wow. Shout out to Brian. Shout out to Brian. Wow. Brian's got a mad podcast in, yeah. in Indonesia. We did college together. Wow. Yeah. Brian's got more than like a million followers on. No on, way. On, yeah, That's nuts. insane. Make sure you tag him. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Repost this, Brian. Yes. Um, but he, yeah, he, he said, oh, there's this girl that I think you'll like. Uh, she, she's done youth before. Um, she's, she's a real no BS person, right? She's wow. straight to the point. She'll tell that as it is. Yeah. Um, I think you should meet her. And when I first met Yana, I was like, great, awesome. I need an extra help. Um, you're jumping on. Sweet, cool. These are my expectations. Um, what are your expectations? Yeah. How can we work together? Yeah. And then we went to watch Finding Dory together. Shut yeah. up. I had a feeling and I had an inkling. So that's why I called another friend. I said, hey, can you come and just in case, like third wheel? Not really, but you know, <laughs> just in case. Just show her. Just, so, yeah. Yeah. No, nah, didn't work. Yeah. No the way. butterfly feelings came and... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wait, but I thought you said that you guys were not into each other. We weren't. We, we were very, oh. very platonic. It's like, hey, let's build our community. Like, let's build these youth, this youth community together. Mm. Yeah. And then it wasn't like you know, we spent a little bit more time together planning and all that stuff. Yeah. And I realized that, hey, ticking these damn boxes. Yeah. Dang. So you kind of went, okay, that's cool. Like, it's almost like your path was a bit more like there's so many things that realign. And then the emotions kind of caught up. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I did this chart yesterday with a friend who's single as well. Mm. And it was actually taken from, uh, so Joseph Prince, Pastor Prince yeah, yeah, in yeah. Singapore. Yeah. He talked about um, relationships yeah. and going through the, um, like, what is it like to kind of like walk your journey? And then when you're fulfilled, then, you know, that person that comes along and yeah. you know, they're fulfilled. And then suddenly you guys meet and it's magic. So I drew this, I took what he said and I, drew it into something that actually really made sense for my friend. Yeah. And so I drew this line, right? And at the bottom of the, so I, on this piece of paper, at the bottom I wrote birth. And then at the top of the paper, I wrote death. And then at the bottom of it, I just drew this one parallel long line. And I was just drawing lines going up, right? Just going up, like all different angles. Mm. Some of them are like more straight. Some of them are a little bit more angled. And you start to realize that as I drew more lines, they started to cross, right? Mm. Some of those lines actually started very far apart. 
But towards the death part, they actually were getting closer and closer together. And it was just me just drawing random lines. And I said to him, the best way, the, the best way that I can explain what Pastor Prince said about finding that partner while you're just work, walking your journey mm. is, can you see there's a little intersection between this line and this line? And they happen to end up meeting together and they actually end up in the same point when they both hit that death mark. Wow. I think that's kind of a nice way to put it. Like, mm-hmm. just walk the journey, man. Like, single guys, man. Don't, don't just... Yeah. Like, don't swipe right all the time. Just, just go out there, walk your path, do your thing. Yes, 100% man. relationships. Hey, I feel like, yeah. And, and I, as well, I think, um, as you mentioned, you know, like a red flag for women, um, if they see a Christian guy with a queen size bed. <laughs> <laughs> red flag. Oh my gosh. You sure your single oh size? Oh my gosh, yes. Honestly. <laughs> Yeah, that was also a, a very that was an, another mistake of mine. I think I minimalized the issue a bit, and I didn't proper hear what um, Bria was requesting. But ah. yes, um, yeah, the the, the bad situation was <laughs> like yeah something else. Um, because English is your second language, do you feel like there were some conversations that you had that you kind of missed little things? Um. Look, there were definitely some conversations with Luke that I missed probably fifth, half of what he said <laughs> that I could not understand. One thing is English, the other thing is what Luke says. Like, he speaks, it's uh, something else. I don't know yeah, if it's Dahl. Queenslander. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dal. <laughs> I heard someone say on Twitter that, oh, I kind of expected him to just go, Dal, would you accept his rose? And just the women looking at each other like, who is he talking to? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's funny. <laughs> so I turned to it, Yana afterwards. I said, hey, doll, do you want to have dinner? She yeah. goes, she goes <laughs> slap me on the face. Goes, Don't you ever dare say that to me. Oh Don't call me God. doll. Or, <laughs> she, or Sheila. Huh, Sheila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he said he's, he's endearing in the country. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true, uh, true. I mean, and he is now in a beautiful relationship. So, props to him. Yeah. Um, but, yes, I think the whole, like, um, compromise thing that became um, and within that was the sleeping over situation um, yeah it was a it was a it was a ended up probably what um, caused um, me and Bria to walk apart and um, I bro when I left the show I was in not in a good place at all really like not at all like I felt like an absolute and this is not again this is not my pity party. I don't. I'm not trying to get anyone's empathy from this. Um, it's just facts. What happened to me, but um, and just yeah, and also just to be very clear, me and Brio are like super fine. We're friends. Like we're checking on each other. That's good. Yeah, That's like sweet. We, I have n- nothing negative to say anything about her, but obviously because the show has this expectation that you're gonna end up with someone. Um, and that was my expectation as well. Uh, obviously, uh, walking away, um, the, the way it happened, I felt like an absolute loser. Um, I felt, I said, I say, I said on camera and it was true. Like I felt like a broken man. Uh, what have I missed? Could have said something different, could have done something differently. And, uh, yeah, it was not easy, um, to come back to Sydney and then have to go through, so much publicity afterwards that you kind of have to be excited about it, you know, like, oh, watch it. It's going to be so good, you know, but deep down I knew that, oh, I'm actually, I've actually failed, you know. Um, so, yeah, I felt like a loser and f- loser. And for the next five weeks, I was seeing two psychologists for at the same time. Get out. Yeah. They, they gave that to you or did you go find it yourself? So, I've, I was already doing therapy myself um, with um, a therapist from Brazil that I've been seeing for two years now. And I started when I had like a lonely crisis um, in, in Sydney and then just kept seeing her and moved a bit more to like a life coaching um, role. Um but then I came back to her after the show. And then, obviously, the production offers you a psychologist 24-7. They have a very robust, I would say, support, mental health support. That's good. So, yeah, they offered this specialized uh, psychologist into participants of reality TV. So, yeah, I've been seeing him. I saw him for another five weeks just to get my mind back on track because, yeah, 
it was so tough to come back. And I think I did so much thinking in the first few nights when I came back, I couldn't sleep for three nights because I was reliving that finale in my head. And always like, what, what could I have done different? What did I do wrong? What did I say? Like, um, And then what I realized is that because my whole life, the relationships I had were mostly with Christian girls, the topic about physical intimacy was never actually a topic. Mm. Because we're both on the same page. You know, you know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll move in with you after we're married. Exactly. Yeah. That was never, ever a conversation. It was just something that both of us knew. Mm. And it was never a question as well about um, sleeping together, mm -hmm. ever. Because it was just same page. We were both aligned. So when I encountered that question for the first time, I had to think about it and because it's something that was so deeply rooted in myself it wasn't something i could come up with an answer so quick mm. um in the time that she needed so that's why i think it shows so much of my thinking and in the show and trying to come up with an answer and yeah i do have regrets one of my regrets is that um i think i should have given bria an answer much quicker than i did um and uh yes the other regret was what my stepmother said to her as well. Oh, yeah. They kind of pinned her a little bit like a, like a villain. Yeah. So, yeah, I was actually surprised that she came. I thought it was going to be my sister or my dad. And when she came, it was a surprise to me. And um, I love her. She is an incredible woman. She is a strong woman. She lost her son of similar age as mine i lost my mom as well so when she, they, she married my dad we kind of had this beautiful bond um and uh, obviously as most i think i would say south american moms latino yeah. moms they're like tiger moms you Bro, know talk about chinese moms too yeah man, <laughs> you, you get it you oh know. man <laughs> so your mom was protective as well Bro, they're all, they're all protected, man. Really? Yeah. Okay, yes. So when she arrived and she saw like that you are in this environment where there's quite a lot of pressure as well. Um, and the topic of um, physical intimacy was something, or sleeping together was something that I was still uh, grappling with and trying to come up with an answer. She kind of took upon herself this thing of, of being protective yeah. and... Look, bro, I promise you that every time I met parents of other girls that I dated, it was so smooth. Like, uh, we, had, we I would always go along with them, like, so well. But in that environment, um, yeah, we just got put into at odds, which was so unfortunate. Um, there was also quite good, beautiful moments that never got shown. Um, Bria and Baby actually had an, a nice conversation and they laughed and they bonded over adventure and road trips and things like that. But obviously that didn't show. But what I want to say is uh, when my stepmom says that um, me dating Bria was me lowering my standards, mm -hmm. that was so hard to to hear. Like I had no idea that had she had said that. We don't have access to the to the episodes before people, so yep. that was the first time I listened to. I was in my living room. I just wanted to like bury my head <laughs> oh, in, on the ground. You know, <laughs> like I'm like I can't believe I'm hearing this. If it hurts for me to hear. I imagine for Bria. Yeah. So I jumped on my phone and I apologized and I said, look, I'm so sorry. I didn't know she said this. Um, this does not, this was not spoken on my behalf at all. And it's not even what I believe. Like dating you didn't mean at all was lowering my standards. It's yeah. not like you're less than me, anything like that. So yeah, I, I apologized vehemently to Bria and uh, she was very kind, very kind. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. Like she seems chill. She's she, so yeah. chill, and she's like, "Oh, so good. You got to spend time with baby." And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, she was very, very generous. If you were your stepmom at that moment, what would you have said differently to Bria? Oh man, so that's, you yeah. understand what she was wanting to say, right? Yeah, I think what she was trying to say is that the f like I've only ever dated Christian girls, and for me to date someone that was not. Um, I don't think Bria was not Christian. Uh, like she has her beliefs and all this stuff. I think she's Catholic. But even that, like I wasn't something that I was putting on anybody. 
you know mm. i was willing to date non-christian girls that's why i went on the show you mm. know um i probably was naive to the replications of all that but i was still open to it yeah, um, flirt to convert right <laughs> <laughs> yes. exactly missionary <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you for Jesus and for myself. That's uh, <laughs> uh, but um, so yeah, I think you go missionary. I'm just yeah, exactly. I think my step <laughs> my stepmom. I think what she's trying to say is that me dating someone that was not a practicing Christian was like outside of um, what I've always done. Yeah, but the language of lowering standards is so not okay. Yeah. You know, like that does not represent me. It's not what I believe at all. I don't think it's what she really meant. I just think that at that moment, it was, it was like, I think there's, when there's cameras on you and the pressure's on mm. you, you want to say it, but you don't want to say it in bad, because no one has bad intentions, right? Mm. You, you, you heard of the idea that no one actually has bad intentions. People just have their perception. Yes. Right? Yes. And so, like, no one goes onto the show like, yeah. to, you know, destroy anyone or anything like that. Yeah. Or even, even in life, like... I'm, yeah. This is kind of controversial, but mm. like you know, you look at terrorists and stuff like that. They 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 have their intentions, whether yeah. they're good or they're bad. It's because of their values and what they stand for, and that's yeah. why they've chosen to do what they want to do, right? Yeah. So, hundred percent. I, I don't think you know, baby had you know bad intentions. Mm. I'm assuming that I kind of, as a Christian watching that, I kind of got yeah. I, I get what you mean. Probably wasn't the best way to say it, but yes, for sure, yeah. yeah. That's all right. You still loving her, right? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't change, right? <laughs> yes, no. I still love, still love her. Yeah. Why? So why? Wh- what did your um? What did your family say when you got back home after they watched? watched um. That? Um. So yeah, they were very concerned about me because obviously oh. when we when you, you are filming, you don't have access to your phone, your wallet, anything. Like, oh, you, so you don't get. You don't talk to friends. You get one phone call to family and mine had to be in English as well so I couldn't talk to my sister so I called my dad and um, yeah I think because um, it's such a emotion heightened environment I remember when I got to call my dad halfway through filming I just remember him picking up and I go dad hey dad this is your son Wes and I just start bawling my eyes like I was just my emotions were so um, heightened um and yeah uh, and i'm a huge family guy i talk to my family every week mm. so for me being away from them uh, or any type of contact was was hard yeah it's different man because you know if we're you know if we're dating in the outside world yeah right you'll tell you oh dude i met this girl or, you know the girl's like oh i met this guy 100 yeah. percent. you're sharing this stuff all the time it's like yeah. a journey like we're all part of this but you're doing this on your own yeah that's uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think we see that or we don't recognize that. Yeah, I think what people need to remember, that's a good thing that you mentioned. People need to remember that the 60, 60 or 70 minutes they watched in one episode, it is probably a collage that represents 10% mm. of what actually happened, of um, yeah, of all the interactions that happened, the conversations, you know. Um, it is... And, and and to think that so much gets left out, yep. uh, you know, like it's literally like just the highlights that makes a, puts a narrative together. So yeah, there's so much that never made it that people will never know. Yeah. Um, but there will be so many nuances um, that will help people understand a lot. Mm, so does that mean in your downtime, you usually like, do you, how, what's the rooming situation like? Are all the girls bunked together, all the guys? Yeah, so I think in one of the episodes, you can actually see the girls' um, yeah. living situation. So they are living in the house, in the mansion of the rose ceremonies. Um, there were in bunk beds, uh, as you can see already in, the, in one of the episodes. Each guy had their own batch bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had my own, like, it was three story townhouse. There was a cinema downstairs. Um, <laughs> rough, man. Yeah, very hard. Oh, Someone, it's tough a tough life. job. Yeah, tough yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. Uh, yeah, Ben has had his own look, had his own as well. That's right. Um, yeah, that was the, that was the living situation. Mine, mine was in South Melbourne, um, Port Melbourne. Yeah. So, yeah, got to 
yeah, got to live five weeks in, in Melbourne was awesome. Yeah. Yes, loved it. Yeah, I think he grew on me. It was a city that I always thought, oh, yeah, I could never live here. By the end, I was like, oh, I could potentially move in. But Sydney's still home, right? A hundred percent. Where's yeah. the food better? <laughs> People say that, yeah, Melbourne has a lot more food options for yeah. sure. But I also love that Sydney has free outdoor options. You know, I, I love that. I, I mean, by like, Incredible beaches, ah, okay, gotcha. stuff to do outside, yeah. you know, like I feel like Melbourne is good, but you can also spend quite a lot of money, <laughs> mm. you know. I get what you mean. They yeah. say that Melbourne has the best bubble tea as well. So Do they? Yes, yes. So whoever's listening to this, if you have a bubble tea chain in Melbourne, I will gladly come down and help hey. try your drinks. <laughs> so-, <laughs> so you're stepping into foodie review now. I don't know, man. Food what? review. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'll have to run that by a couple of friends. Yes. <laughs> hey, can I uh, collab with you do some yeah. food stuff? Like, no, dude, you're the business guy. Stay, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. So you watch the show. Yeah. And you're my friend. Like, yeah. we've known each other for years now. Yeah. How did you, how, how was that for you, um, watching the West and the Batchy and the West you knew? Was there any difference? Was there anything like that you're like, oh, any, any highlights from you? Like, I was curious when Lisa jumped in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm, is Wes going to keep, is Wes going to keep, is she going to take his virginity? <laughs> is, is Wes going to keep his eye above, uh, uh neck level? <laughs> <laughs> Where's his Wesley, 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 can I get some time with you? <laughs> <laughs> that was gold when I saw oh that. I said, gosh, "Man, bro. this girl's brave." Lisa brought the entertainment. Hey. She, she's great. She's yeah. fantastic. Even yeah. the first episode, like she's sitting back watching everyone. She's going, "Yeah, no one has it <laughs> like what I have." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the hardest girl here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good, man. Yes. You girl, you run that race. Yeah, yeah you own 100% that. Yeah. Enjoy. She played the funny villain, I think. I love it. Yeah. I think I think she has a huge opportunity to do so much out there because oh, for sure. her personality, her character is mm. like, I don't know if, if I talk about on a mark, marketing point of view, yeah. she's got what it takes actually, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's really bubbly energy. But for you, bro, um, as a friend, watching you on the show- Oh man, I, I watched. I was, I was actually like, we're cheering for you, man. Awesome, like, so when, good. When you came on the, there was the, you know, when they're showing, especially in the beginning, when they're showing Ben and Luke, like, we yeah. had a watch party. Yeah, we're like, ah, forget about those guys. Oh, where's on? Where's on? I was the last one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coming down the stairs. That's right. Yeah. Uh, some of your outfits that you wore, I'm like, dude, you got to go turtleneck a little bit more, man. Okay, that suits yeah. you. Yeah, with that jacket. Yeah, I've oh. never been a turtleneck guy, but yes, they gave me a few times in the show, and also the green collar. The green, yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah. I, I wore quite a few green stuff that I even had a conversation with the stylist. I was like, why are you putting me in so much green? Rah, rah, rah. She's like, it looks good in your olive skin. <laughs> Shout out to Shaz if you're hearing this, uh, <laughs> our stylist. And she's right. You know, I actually yeah. been wearing a lot more green after the show, yes. Well, that trench coat that you wore as well in Melbourne. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that was very, nice. Very good, yes. Um, you need ice skating sessions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How terrible was that? Oh, my God. So many falls. Uh, but I think it's I'm a- very close to the Olympic Games. Yeah, I think I can make it. Not bad. The Brazilian team. The Brazilian team. <laughs> At worst, you know, we'll contact some friends in China. Exactly. Maybe you can train with them for a little bit. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. There, you, one thing that I was so proud of you, bro, was how you never compromised on your faith. Awesome. And I think when I spoke to you before the whole show started, I think you said something along the lines of, you know, I'm kind of concerned about how the church community or my church community is going to see or judge me. Yeah. Uh, and I had that playing in the back of my head the mm. whole time I was watching it. And I was thinking to myself, you know, if I was in those situations, like how would I act? And I think you represented um, not just our church community, but also I think your faith in a good way. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that really stood out was that you are pastoral at heart. Oh, man. Yeah, you just have a heart for people. And I think yeah. that's the beautiful thing about what, you know, like following Jesus has done yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, we just want to be more like him. And yeah. to be more like him is to love on others. Love and people, I, yeah. And I think love... I know it sounds so corny and simple and silly, but faith, hope, and love, and of all these yeah. love, right? It's the greatest thing that yeah. we can have. And I think on that topic, it's something that, um, yes, like I don't think I even think when I'm doing it. Um, I just think growing up in church, 
And learning since early on about loving on others, I think it's something that becomes part of who you are. So a funny story was that early on when there was like 20 women in the house mm. and we would go to the mansion, I would hug every single girl, even <laughs> even the ones that are not necessarily in my group, yeah. you know, like I would hug everyone and yeah. that would take time. It was like 20 girls. Mm. Um, it was funny because... Um, <laughs> sometimes the boys would be a bit nervous to go to the mansion, you know. And yeah. I was like, I love coming here, you know. Like, I love like, if like, yeah, I don't mind at all. And then the girls started talking about the fact that I give everyone a hug. Yeah. And then even to say bye, there were times that we needed to leave, and then a producer would be like, "Hey, go, hey boys, we need to get you out. Just, just give a wave and roll out." And I would just go and hug every girl again. You know? <laughs> and then at one point, it started to become like, "Oh, Wes, you know, like, oh, oh you." It was, and then I remember one day I, I was doing that, and as I'm, I was leaving, I started hugging all the girls, and then Luke just like, "Oh, Wes, now I have to do it as well, you know, otherwise <laughs> I will look bad." <laughs> so yeah, I think it was those little things that I felt like, um, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad I got to, you know, be myself, yeah, um, and I guess show some love, yeah. That's, and you know what, because. You know, when like when when I first stepped into um, Inner West campus where you were, yeah, um, that was the like you're the first first friendly face that I recognized. Yeah, and you know that's you, man. You yeah. walked in there. I walked in there, uh, and and you gave me a hug. We yeah. chatted a little bit as well. Yeah, um, but that's just you through and through, yeah. man. And I think Love that's it. what one of the beautiful things is that uh, our church community just does that right? mm, yeah and of course you know people are going to say oh you know this and this about you know religion and stuff mm. like that and we'll jump into that because yeah. I think that's a really interesting topic because throughout the whole season of Bachelor mm. they're talking about oh this guy's religious 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 Re yes yes but at the same time we we understand what that word means mm. but, there's but it's another, not what we want what we want to be called yeah, yeah. alright let's yeah. jump into it this is hot yeah. <laughs> so explain to me in your point of view what's the difference between religion and relationship yeah, I understand how people say um, religious, religious. I mean, the whole origin of the word religion comes from the Latin religare, which means reconnect. So the, I, the idea of uh, reconnect to something other than yourself or between you and the divine. So I understand how what the word means, but it can also, it also became over millennia something that is used as you follow a set of rules or you follow... Um, doctrines and all that stuff. Um, whereas for me, I find it so funny when people, not funny, but it's interesting when people tell me, oh, you didn't compromise on your faith. And for me, I'm like, I think Jesus is the most real thing I could ever have. You know, like it's more real than, um, I don't know, this iPhone, this food, or like I have, I've, I've encountered Jesus in so many ways throughout my life, you know, like I can pinpoint moments that I definitely felt like I wouldn't have the strength if it wasn't for Jesus carrying me through a season. For example, like when my parents um, divorced or when my mom passed away or my journey of forgiveness with my dad, which is a whole nother story, you know, like how me and my dad went from completely not talking to each other to like best mates, you know, we talk every week and I uh, love him. Um, so I definitely feel like Jesus has inspired me so much to be a better man, to be more forgiving, more respectful, more kind. And that was not coming from, hey Wes, here's a list of things that you should do, a list of things that you shouldn't do, which can be what people understand as religion. I also don't attack the word, so because at the end of the day, it's just semantics for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I understand when people say, oh, religious, I was like, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I would use another word, but I'm also not going to be so precious about it. Um, but yes, I, I think, um, and the fact as well that someone that is quite unapologetically in love with Jesus, to go on a show like that, it's not usually where people go. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just earlier today, someone was asking me, oh, you know, some Christians would say that Christ that Christians shouldn't go to shows like this. To which I'm like, yeah, I understand, but um, I'm, I'm like, I don't think there should be this division, you know, like mm. these are the things we should, like these are the places we should go into, these are the places we shouldn't go into. Like Jesus was criticized for going to places, you know, that people said at that time that he shouldn't go, you know, mm. and um, 
I think if anything, um, if I had this opportunity that I did not pursue, you know, I, I and I find it so funny when people are like Wesley shouldn't be in the show. I, I agree with you. I had those same second thoughts. <laughs> I wanted to leave, you know, like um, I'm glad I did it, uh, but also it didn't chose me, <laughs> you yeah. know, like that was a series of decisions that and uh, of course it, when it came to an offer i could could have said no but i decided to go anyway so i take full responsibility for that um but yes um i think i i'm glad i did i'm proud that i did i would still do it all over again yeah um i got asked the other day what was the best part of all the show um and my my answer is so quick you know it's people and I'm not only talking the mm. cast, the incredible women that I met, but the crew, you know, the the super genuine stylist that I got to see every day, the makeup lady that sat there and heard my cries and my 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 good moments, you know, like um, my the guys who were um, meant to be with me 24-7, um, you know, the sound guy that I became really good friends with, the cameras, you know, like people were so incredible, like production, Everyone at Warner Brothers was so, so nice. So mm. uh, even Channel 10 as well. So I'm like, wow, had I not done this, I would have not met these people. So right. for me, these are the prize. Mm. And during, during your downtime as well, do you feel like you have seeked God even more? Do you feel like your relationship has grown with Jesus after the show? Yeah, there was definitely a sense of loneliness in terms of um, I didn't have someone of, I guess, faith that I could do life with yeah that i do normally mm. with my friends now so i definitely felt like i needed to to dig deeper so i had a bit of a routine in my mornings i would do my devotionals read maybe a chapter of the bible i'm also very big into philosophy recently so i'm reading a lot on those on the stoics because i do think it's wisdom you know about self-control about understanding what's under your control what's not and accepting things uh so i did a bit of that reading as well um and then i remember clearly every day i was just say jesus i just want to feel your presence today you yeah. know i just want you to come with me on set on my dates uh let there be something when um let there be something different in the atmosphere you know like mm. make it smooth and yeah, I just want a few presents. I remember asking that all all the time. And then, because we didn't have our phones, um, I had to buy this super cheap on Haymarket MP3 player, <laughs> <laughs> and I just loaded like music there, some worship music. So yeah, I had had my sessions as well to just feel like I was like feeling my soul. Yeah. So you went back to the old old yeah. MP3 man. Wow. Would have thought. <laughs> Wait, so in your batch pad, there was no. No contact to the outside world. No, you couldn't. You couldn't watch the news. You couldn't listen to radio. Dang. So yeah. what did you have? So like, what would Ben and Luke do? Oh, um, Work well, out. obviously, yeah. <laughs> no, we had gyms. Yeah, each one of us had gym memberships. Uh, yeah, could definitely go work out, which I try to do. Um, Wait, so that means you can leave the batch? Yeah, you can leave. And you can go to the gym? Yeah, we had Sundays off. Someone follow you or? Yeah, you always have someone with you. You're never alone ever for five weeks. Oh, wow. So I uh, actually appreciated having some long time when I left the show. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, And then. And that's the same with each girl as well. They have someone that's with them the whole time. um, Yeah, it's, yeah, they have someone always. You're never alone. Um, uh, you always have someone with you. Those um, the people are responsible for looking after you, mm-hmm. um, and also make sure that you have food, you have groceries, you have True. if you if you're on a date, um, and even if there's a break, they check on. Do you want coffee? You know, they hungry. Do you want a mint? Oh, I was asking for mint all the time <laughs> to be kiss ready, you know? <laughs> this yeah. <now> stank. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, yeah, Pash City. Uh, but yes, no, it, it is, uh, that was a full robust structure, yes. How did you practice your kissing? Did you practice it before the show? <laughs> <laughs> I had heard from another batchy that kissing in real life and kissing on television is different that you should do a bit different really in re- in in because of camera 
So, so I don't think I, I, I didn't practice at all. I was just aware of like, oh, maybe just think that there's a camera here. But uh, the problem is that the way I've always done kissing uh, and Brazilians are like that. We are, it, uh, the, I got a feedback that Brazilians are quite tonguey, you know. So for me, there is no such a thing as kissing without tongue. Mm -hmm. Not at all. I've never done that before. You're Brazilian, aren't you, Kyle? Ah. Yeah, you got your <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh, yeah. So kissing without tongue for me was not even a thing until I came to Australia and then obviously kissed some girls. And they're like, wow, a bit in, you're a bit intense with the tongue. I was like, what do you mean? How do you do? Like, she was like, oh, you kind of have to ease into it. I was like, really? Oh, well, teach me then. <laughs> ah, very good. Yeah. Very good. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth operator. Keep that in your back pocket, single guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think I kissed three girls mm -hmm. in the show, which, yeah, it's not a lot. Yeah. Amongst 24. Yeah. That's all right, man. That's, yeah, that's good. It's a good retro. One exactly. Eight, yeah? So yes, that's fine. It is a good. The, retro. <laughs> but do you think that? Um, the, do you think that the the the? I mean, from a from a girl's perspective, right? Yeah. If on the bachelorette. Yeah. Right. How would that flip for for them? Yeah. Right? It would be. Well, you, 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 you would be, yeah. You it would be the same thing, but opposite. Like so, I guess to for lack of a better term, in the bachelor, the guys are the heroes. Right. Um, and in the bachelorette, the women would be the hero. Um, but, but for girls, you think about, you know, like you talk about your batch pad and stuff like that, right? Yeah. As guys, yes, we can kind of go into our own little shell, do our own little thing. But girls, you know, like anything that comes up, my wife needs to talk to someone about it, right? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, there would definitely be people to talk to. Like, yeah. there will be producers all the time. Oh, yes, okay. 100%. They would never be alone. Okay. 100%. No, they're fine. So, are you thinking about a reality show or something? Me? Should yeah. I? I mean, I can start like a... There's an Australian one in Australia. <laughs> Singles, yeah? Yeah, so we never had an Asian bachelor. We've never had an Asian bachelor. Okay. We've never had an Asian bachelor, Kyle. Wow. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I'm, start, I'm, start, I'm going to start vouching for that. That's right. Yeah. I'll be the producer. Can I be the producer? Sure. Let's do yeah. We need an Asian bachelor for sure. <laughs> We can get Angus to choose the women. <laughs> <laughs> Angus, if you're listening to this, we want a job for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to hook him up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know some people now. You know some people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as a, as a girl, if, they, if you flip the, flip, flip the whole yeah. thing around, right? The bachelorette. Yeah. Like what goes through their mind? Is it complete? Yeah, I actually don't how know. Would you, how would you, if you were a girl, yeah. you're not a girl. Yeah. But if you were, you know, threw yourself in, in, in that girl's shoes with like 24 dudes in front of you. Yeah. How do you make those selections? How do you? Look, I can only speak from my, from my perspective. I never met any bachelorette. Um, I think in my head, I, want, I was trying to find someone in Sydney. Um, that for me, like geographically, just made sense because I didn't want to do long distance. Um, so for me, it was my first compromise. I was willing to date someone um, outside of what I thought I wanted to do. Um, and then that's why the reason why I think, obviously, she's an incredible woman, but Holly was someone that I connected early on the first night. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to take her all the way to finale. Um, she was something I was very, very keen on. And then obviously when she said she didn't feel a spark, I also took like rejections part of life. You watched it. Yeah. What did you think of that moment? I was like, the dancing part was awkward, bro. <laughs> <laughs> dancing. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, because she was so not in it. Yes, because yeah, she was, yeah. And then but she, she did really well. She did, yeah. And yeah. she had the commentary as well. And then they, she's like, "Oh, I'm very nervous. Yeah, I love dancing, but because of this, yeah." Yeah. And then in the and then on the commentary, she's like, "But I wanted to stay a little bit more longer so I can hang out with uh, Ben a little yeah. more." And I'm going, "Damn, Holly, yeah. these are my boy Wes to say." <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. And then I, I did bring her to the the group date, yeah, on tennis, so she could have a chance. But the funny thing is that we actually finished that date. We finished dancing. Oh, okay. So we finished as like mates and friends and they actually broke such a massive icebreaker. Yeah. And she's someone that I talk to still today and incredible, incredible girl. I look forward to, you know, just um, 
um, being friends outside of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least you held to your word because you, she said texture, you know, after the... Yeah, yeah we did have a coffee scene. Yeah, yeah, yes, see, yes, you're a man yeah. of your word. 100%. How good is that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yes. the problem a lot of times with, with friends these days. This is what I find, you know, they go, hey, I haven't seen you for a little bit. Let's catch up. Yeah, let's catch up. I'll talk to you soon. And we never... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's why I have this really specific thing. If people go, oh, let's catch up. I go, cool. When? Next week. What time? Day. Mm. And I put it in my calendar. I was like, 100%. You, you have yeah. to be like that. Because otherwise, life just takes over. 100%, bro. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Two, three weeks. Oh, I was meant to catch up with you. you it was like this. Early? Hey, like we finished finale on yeah. Wednesday. And you're like, bro, whenever you're ready, let's um, let's do this. And I was like, yeah, whenever. when are you thinking? Should we wait for next year and you're like no let's do tomorrow yeah. <laughs> I'm like okay <laughs> that's yes. cool man yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, no, no time to waste man no yeah. bro, I love it because people want to hear what you want to say bro <laughs> so we just got to do our not part not sure about know? that oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I want to hear what you have to say man awesome, so I want to hear uh, what you have to say about I guess the word compromise because Bria said heaps about um, mm. she compromised heaps yeah. um, her family said her fam- was it friends friends sister her friends <laughs> Yeah, it was her sister and her mom. Yeah, yeah mom. they talking about how they're talking about how you know she compromised a lot, mm-hmm. and then it all almost made it sound like you didn't compromise anything. And you just mm. mentioned that you know one of the first simple things was that I chose to find someone that was in Sydney, but you know Bria's from Brisbane, mm. or, so Queensland. Yeah. So do you feel as if you kind of met her? In, in your in your perspective, right? Again, yeah. There's no right or wrong, but do you yeah. feel like you've done your part and you you did your best to meet her? Yeah. The best possible way. Yes. Um. Yeah, I think I was definitely trying to meet her halfway. I think I may have come across as like this stubborn guy that never moves, and there were two instances that obviously didn't make the cut but i we went through a list and i told her hey these are the things i am compromising on um it never got shown and some of the things are very personal um to um our relationship and things that are not my my, it's not my story to tell that people will never know but they were very important to me that i wasn't able to do it um because of you know some things from her side that uh, for me I was more than happy I was happy to compromise and I did Um, it's her story to tell it's not mine and um, to be honest yeah people will never know and um, I think it's good it's good that um, relationships are dealt in private I think I was very willing to, to be vulnerable when I was during the show um, but I, outside of the show, I think I'm going to take right back my, to my privacy, um, things about relationship hundred percent, because that's healthy. That's the way it should be done. So, um, I did, I did do compromises. Just people would, would never know. Um, mm. and I know for people hearing this, I'll be like, oh, you're cop out. You don't want to, I just not interested. I don't have to prove anything to anyone, you know, yeah. like, um, one th- th- things that for me um, that I can share was, well, first of all, dating someone that um, didn't necessarily have the same faith or aligned the same values as I did. Um, I was compromising um, and then dating someone that I was not uh, in the same city and that I was more than willi- willing to go like once or twice a month. A month. I was not expecting her to come to Sydney all the time. Mm. I always said hey this is not going to be all on you like we're going to make this thing work together i am going to cairns to see you you know i'm not expecting you to come just to be with me all the time um yeah and then there was something else quite yeah personal that i told her hey i think i'm compromising on this as well um but yet it didn't seem like it was yeah halfway but in saying all this I would say that uh, we chatted afterwards and um, we came to peace to what happened. Um, And we are very, we became friends. We're friendly to each other. And I look forward to catching up with her. If I go to Cairns or she comes down to Sydney, um, there is no hard feelings at all. Uh, We're both adults, mature, 
that we understood that we we're different different people doesn't mean right or wrong it's just different mm. um and um yes i think at the end of the day it was meant to be you mm. know what happened was meant to be and i will say this what she did in the end that she said i'm finding my voice and i chose me i was honestly so proud of her mm. like even though it probably at my expense but um um i was very happy that she did that that she stood her grounds and that she was like hey this is where i'm willing to go and if you can't meet me here this is not gonna work i'm like uh, i was i was so amazed by her stance and um yes i i told her afterwards like i'm that was really beautiful to see yeah and I think she will inspire a lot of people as well. I think so. I think uh, we're, we're looking at some of the news articles as well. Yeah. And, they, and they kind of pinned you as the guy who kind of like lost. Got dumped. You know, yeah, dumped. Like yeah. your head was like down, hand in the, you know. Yeah. And then they kind of <laughs> put her as, uh, like they, they've they've shown photos of her walking off and she's got like this, you know what? I thought about me. Like this this is a yeah. proud Bria moment. Yeah, yeah. And in the back of my head, I can just hear the song, What does it kill you? <laughs> Stronger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw it as well. Some people like, uh, Bri is the hero, you know, yeah. she, she's the winner of the show. And uh, look, I think they're not wrong. Yes, I, I probably got painted as the bad guy. But it doesn't really affect you, right? But who cares? You know, yeah, it doesn't affect That's you. news, bro. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. You've seen the Facebook messages, right? Yeah, You exactly. had a really interesting one as well. Um, one of well, the previous guy who did the batchy. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, he posted yeah. that one. What yeah, Jed posted on Jed, his yeah, yeah. Facebook, on his Instagram. They're like, oh, people are talking about Wes not compromising, rah, rah, rah. And yeah, he was very kind, very like, hey, bro, I'm, I'll back you up, and rah, rah, rah. But um, to be honest, um, I don't care at all. Like, And I told Bria, I was like, hey, I knew that this was going to be the case when we left filming. As soon as this airs, I will be the target. You know, I don't. I don't care as long as we are good with each other. That's cool, man. As long as you know who I am, and we spent hours and hours and hours talking to each other, FaceTiming, um, over the last few months, and I'm confident that Bria knows the man I am, mm-hmm. um, and we have a mutual respect for each other. And as long as that's the case, I'm like, I don't care what other people think. Like, yeah. the, what they watched is probably like ten percent of what happened. You know. Do you feel as if there was a um? Like in the back of my head, I put mm. myself in your shoes. If I was in that sh- in that situation, I'd feel like the pressure of the cameras are trying to make me make a decision on the spot. Yeah, like part of me would have gone, you know what? After the show's done, we yeah. can actually talk a little bit more about it and actually map it out and see. If it yeah, works. for but sure. But I feel like the show wouldn't let you do that. Yeah, no, we definitely talked quite a lot, quite a lot after the show. Yeah, and I also want to say this. Go on. When I say that I closed the door on her. That was 100% out of pride. Um, it was my ego. I didn't want to feel like um, um, I was a loser. Yeah. So, yeah, it was 100% out of my, my pride, you know. So, yeah, I apologize for that. I take it I take it back. Um, and Girls are smart, man. She read it. Yeah. In the, did, you, did you in the commentary that she said afterwards, like the voiceover, she said this. I should write this down. She goes, "Closing the door could be out of pride, but also deep down, he knew he couldn't make it work." Yeah. Oh yeah. For I'm sure. Like, oh, yeah. she read read you like a book, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it was pride. Hundred percent was the male pride, and uh, yeah, I was embarrassed about it afterwards. But um, it is what it is. That's what happens when you're trying to navigate a relationship, and there's like ten cameras on you in a microphone. Mm. No one knows what it is like to go through that. You know, people think that you should have answers quick on time um but no one goes through that because you shouldn't you shouldn't have intimate conversations broadcasted to thousands and thousands of people Mm. you know um what we accepted we we signed up for to do is actually quite mad crazy you know to say i'm gonna go try to find love and i could potentially get out heartbroken heartbroken and in the process i could also make mistakes i could also say things that i regret i could also um made a fool of myself and it will be everything recorded for people to see that's what you're signing not that's mad what you sign up for mm. um and yeah that's why a very small percentage of the population are 
I would say dumb enough to go to reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> but then myself. At, <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, there are some that actually work out really well. Like yes, Luke, Luke yes. And so there's yes. been other people that be married as well. Hundred percent. Yes. How how is it? How do those? How are those ones different to the ones that kind of don't? You know. Like, yeah. Well, I think we started the ratio, right? It was three guys and 24 girls. So mm -hmm. obviously there would be a lot of people heartbroken. No, or maybe wouldn't find that person. Yeah. Um, I think there is so much out of our control as well. Like I don't get to choose um, who will be the, the girls at all. That's true. Um, there's other countries where I think in America, in Sweden, they announce who's the bachelor. And then people will, and then they open for applications. Oh. So whoever is applying kind of can get a, already a bit of like a inside scoop of who they're applying for. Yep. Whereas here in Australia is a surprise for both sides. Right. You know. Um, so yeah, there's so much that is outside of my control um, that, yeah, influences in choosing a partner. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I think. Um, I forgot what you asked. Uh, I was just talking about the like what what makes the ones that work and what makes the ones. Oh, that the don't ones work. that work and ones that doesn't. Uh, yeah, I think a major part of that is actually quite, I would say, destiny or luck. You know, like there's a bit of luck in there for sure. Like the fact that you know, looking at Ellie from night one, just knew and developed this beautiful connection. Yeah, and just kept growing. It is kind of like the fairy tale. It's like the. Um, the story that everyone's after, you know, and I'm so happy for them. And yeah, it's cute, bro. It's yeah, really cute. getting out of there with them both as some of my close friends was like one of the best things I got out of all this. Yeah, it's almost like when you see your friends win, you're like, hey, yeah, man, like I feel like I was a part of that. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm so stoked. Yeah. Yes, like I'm, you're always gonna be a part of that relationship. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? And we have this experience that we shared, that we have it together. Like to and be able to say that I had a first row seat to watch that their story unfold mostly from Luke's side because we would go on a beer once a week and he would tell us stuff and just to hear how much he was in love and uh, then getting to watch the proper dates as it got aired yeah I'm like wow what an honor you know like very yeah. honored to be able to say that and uh, I hope they invite me for the wedding do you, yeah. <laughs> you represented your faith in a good way and in, in the positive way to not just Luke and Ben and the girls, but also to freaking Australia wide. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, and man, some of your yeah. family in Brazil, right? Yeah. Watching it as well. yeah, I think it's a tough one because look, um, differently than Brazil, I feel like Australia is almost like a post Christianity uh, country. What does that mean? So I would say in Brazil, for example, being a Christian, um, I'll come back to Australia. So I think in Australia, when you say you're Christian, people kind of roll, your, roll their eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a bit of attitude mm -hmm. uh, towards Christianity. In Brazil, it's not the case at all. If anything, most of the population have some, have a faith, have mm -hmm. some sort of faith. And Christianity is the most popular one. Yeah. So, yes, um, I kind of knew that going to, and, and the funny thing is that also, you can get criticized from both sides, from the non-Christian saying, what is this Christian dude doing there? And from the Christian saying, what is he doing there? You know, like, you can't, <laughs> can't, you win, can't win, you know, like, so I think I just had to decide that, you know what, I'm going to live my life you gotta um, do you. and I'm going to do you my, myself and yeah. there will always be people that uh, criticize and my hope is that I inspire some. That's cool, know? man. Yeah. Hey, can you explain to me something? On the finale, I saw this. So you guys made a decision, you said something, yeah. and then suddenly all of the pot plants decided to crash and there was an earthquake. What the <laughs> yes. hell was that, man? How crazy was that moment? I was like, I cannot believe the timing of this wind gust here. Um, what the freaking hell yeah, was that? I've read somewhere people going, yeah, they had big fans to create that. And I'm like, no, they didn't. <laughs> It was proper, like, it was a proper windy day in Melbourne, and uh, we thought it was going to start raining, and it did start raining, just, it was raining moments before that. Yeah. So, when they stopped raining, they were like, okay, Wes, it's not raining anymore, go to your position, and then they brought Bria in, and as I delivered my speech, and she delivered hers, in that moment, this wind of, of 
the gust of wind came and literally dropped all this plant pots <laughs> and we just we just looked at each other started laughing we were like this is a sign <laughs> if this is not a sign we don't know what it is you know like, so yeah it was actually such a, a funny moment well, actually it's probably so cool to see that i had that moment and then luke and lana <laughs> Had the had the goose yeah. attack, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, and then both started laughing. I'm like, <laughs> okay, this is actually so good to see. You know, like, you, you, you lighten up the mood a bit, yeah. But yeah, uh, it was definitely interesting to see the timing of the of the the wind. Yeah. <laughs> so, when, so when Lana kind of finished off at the end, when Luke decided not to um, go mm. with her, mm. did you get a chance to speak to her? Is that how you guys? No, know? no, oh, okay. no, no. Yeah, I actually just. Um, yeah, I saw her um, way later. Yes, no, mm. we didn't get to see each other. I just saw the boys after um, as we wrapped everything, and I congratulated obviously Ali and McKenna, mm. um, which that was also a good moment. It was good that they kept at the end, um, and it was really hard for me because after everything that happened, and Luke came talk to me, I was in such an emotional state that I came back to my room mm. and I had my people there, my, you know, like the ones, the stylist, the makeup artist, the sound guy. And people just don't, obviously they're trying to support you, they're trying to be there for you, but they just don't know what to do. Like they, they, they give you a hug and every time someone hugged me, I would just start crying all over again. Mm. Um, and then Osher came as well and talked to me for a bit and um, tried to comfort me and, yeah, he didn't have to do that. It was very kind of him to do. But I was in such an emotional state that I'm like, I need to get out of this. You yeah. know, like I'm I'm emotionally depleted. Um, because every time I was just holding my tears all the time. And then I said, Hey, someone said, Hey, we need to just go um film the final bit. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't wanna see anybody now. I'm a freaking loser. I just wanna go home, you know, like What's but- the final bit? It was when I walk into Luke and Ali. Ah, okay. Because I just wanted to be done. I just wanted right. to, and I and and because I knew it was such a beautiful, happy moment for them, I didn't want to to crush that. Yeah. You know, to like we've been going through this for weeks, and you guys finally, mm. you know, found each other. Um, I didn't want to be the one that like brings the mood down. Mm-hmm. So I remember just like walking in my room. <laughs> just before going to that moment like Wes it's not about you it's not about you it's not about you it's not about you and then I kept repeating that and then I pull myself together again and then I walk into Luke and and Ali and then Ali's being the beautiful human that she is is always super sympathetic empath, empath, empath like um, really try to support me at one point and I could feel that they wanted to hear more and I just had to cut I was like look guys this is not my pity party yeah, you said that. Yeah, though, yeah, we are here to celebrate, and I'm so, so, so um, thankful for you guys. And this is so beautiful. And got to tell Ellie something that I saw Luke being throughout the season. Hey, every time he talked about you, his eyes, you know, brighten up. Yeah. So it's very beautiful to see you guys together. And then Ben and McKenna walked in as well, and That's sweet. it was nice to congratulate them. And yeah yeah definitely a one of the hardest i would say moments of my life that i had to really focus on it's not about me i'm just here for my friends and i don't want to bring this mood down yeah are there any awkward moments (laughs) (laughs) i think i realized that kissing in front of three cameras is very awkward Oh gosh, I was like in the first one in the in the hot tub. Don't try it here, man. <laughs> Bro, don't you do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the one in the hot tub, I was like, oh moly gosh, this is not oh, like, yeah. yeah. It it is <laughs> always awkward, I found, yes. But um But imagine like too hot to handle or love island or stuff like that. Oh my god. They gosh. go all out, man. Yeah, did you watch those first? I, I yeah. That's, mm. I know. Pity party. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, their editing is really good. I yeah. actually think that a lot of these dating shows, it's pretty much very similar, right? Mm. But it's the editing, you know, the the way that they build the tension up just before the ad break yeah. and all of that. And yeah, you know, I, I want to talk about that as well because it's very similar to how social media hooks and all of that stuff okay. is moving forward when yeah. it comes to 
grabbing people's attention. Yeah. Because attention for people is the currency of the future. Yeah. So you grew up this business from this business, this podcast yeah. from zero. Right? That's right. That's um, right. Tell me, was, tell me, how did you do it? Like, how do you edit? I'm not done with batchy <laughs> stuff, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, we, we keep on, we keep on batching. Then you tell me. But um, awkward stuff, awkward moments, bro. Yeah, awkward moments. Yes, kissing in front of the camera for sure, hundred um, percent. What else? Oh gosh, there was a there was a moment that was so bad <laughs> when I go to the mansion and um, oh gosh, this is actually quite bad, but it's funny. I go to the mansion to invite Holly for my single date with her yeah. to go do samba. I was wearing this um, pinky um, thing, this pink hood, and it was a number. I was a number smaller. <laughs> <laughs> than what I usually wear. And I told the this I told them I was like, guys, I think this is a bit tight. She was like, no, it looks good. And then gosh, I, I went there and then I invited Holly and we came to the single date. As soon as she arrived in the single date, she was like, So yeah, Wes, remember when you're like in the mansion and you sat in the couch? Yeah, everyone could see your butt crack. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, F my life, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now all the girls have seen my butt crack. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, marketing, marketing yeah, what I want. Exactly. I was just trying to give that, you a bit of a... It's just building intimacy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, yikes. You, know, you know, after the scene when they finish the rose ceremony, it's like, yeah. okay, you gentlemen can go now. And then, oh, you can, you can say goodbye. Yeah. I feel like as soon as the cameras stop rolling... Yeah, I reckon that'll be really awkward, right? It's like, uh, no, it-, it was actually quite good. Oh, yeah? I actually always enjoyed the end of the rose ceremonies because, uh, I mean, in the beginning, you have very little stakes because you're not as invested, of course. Yep. But towards the end, it gets harder and harder because you've built a connection in a relationship. But I've always found the end of the rose ceremony is quite wholesome, you know, yeah. to, to be there just like, you know, looking good with the girls and we were hugging each other and just like, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, that was hard. And, and it was something that was always hard for all of us to see someone that we liked leaving. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we always ha- enjoyed a, f- a little bit of a few moments there of uh, camaraderie and I really enjoyed those moments. It was really nice. Is there a bond that you think that can't be broken? Like something we've shared together? Let's say, for example, you know, when like... When, I don't know. Let's uh, put it mm. back in church terms, right? Mm. Like if we do like a like an event together, or if we've gone on a tour together, right? There's like a bond. Yeah, for you sure. Experience that. Do you think that? Yeah. I. Oh, sorry. I think no. I think the fact that we went through this experience all together is yeah. definitely something that bonds us uh, for sure. Um, and yeah, it's a special thing. I think I'll obviously, like, we'll never forget. Uh, I think mo- like the women are so genuine and incredible mm-hmm. and I look forward to being proper friends uh, mm-hmm. with them. Obviously, Luke and Ben, uh, two incredible solid guys that we always going to have this as the, as like, almost like when you do like a proper camp together, you know? Yeah, like a, school camp, right? Yeah, like school camp. Mates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've, gone, we've done this together. We've th- gone through this. So yeah, for sure. Why you did an Aussie school camp? Good yeah. job, man. <laughs> yes, I did. Very intense one. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cameras. Yes. Did you did you connect with some people that you never thought that you would have connected after the show had ended? I did. Yeah. Uh, not that I never thought. I was just think because after a few days, you kind of develop your group, you know, like the lack like of a better term, your girls. Oh, yeah. yeah. So every time we go to the mansion, we'll talk to them. Yeah. Um, and they ended up being people that I never actually got to speak to much. Mm-hmm. Lana, for example, was one of them. You mm-hmm. know, like of course I knew who she was. I knew she was into Luke, and I knew they were developing the relationship. But I never actually throughout throughout stopped to talk to her properly. Yep. And it wasn't until we left that we connected and we chat and we actually uh, became really good friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's an incredible, incredible woman. And uh, yeah, we look forward to go for drinks together. We actually scheduled something for this week to to nice. go and celebrate the freedom again because, <laughs> you know, yeah. like after you made a date. Yeah, after, we left with, single, yeah. but I yeah. couldn't tell anyone, you right, know, and yeah, I yeah. couldn't go on dates because it's, oh, you can't hang out with them as well. If I went, if I asked a girl out for the last few months, she would instantly she would go. He's cheating on this his girl, or he's single, ah. and you could not let people know your status. Yes, you know um, that was like high liability thing. Yeah, so I couldn't. 
go on dates for yeah. months, which is the most sucky thing, you yeah. know, that like, oh, yeah, I'm still single and I can't see anyone, you know. Mm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very stoked to be back in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Picking up my roses again. That's no, right. no, no, Give I'm not Jada giving roses. Give Jada call, maybe. <laughs> 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 no, she's she. I think she's dating. I don't know. That's not my story to tell, but I I think she. Yeah. It's good, man. Yeah, yeah, hundred well, percent. At least she knew what she was looking for. For well, sure. Man. Yeah, she's an incredible girl. By the way, like it was really nice to spend time with her. Mm, that is cool. Um, she seemed like someone that. I mean, if you guys went to Melbourne, uh, maybe she should not take her friend to Melbourne that 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 day to Melbourne. Apparently, your name is still sprayed on the... Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's true. Maybe it's COVID. <laughs> yeah. Our little world. That day. That's cute, man. That's cute. Yours are really nice. Yeah, really I love that. So, okay, before we jump into the social media stuff, so what about your dating game now? Like, what has changed? Are you going into it differently? Well, I'm a free man. I'm a two days old free man, literally. Two so. days? Yeah, because it aired in Wednesday. Oh, that's true. So before that, I couldn't do anything. Shoot, so, that yeah, sucks. My dating game now is, I need to get out there. I would love to, you know, be kissing before the New Year's. <laughs> so are there any non-negotiables now? Um, any non-negotiables? Um, I don't want to think on those terms. I just think I will approach dating in a different light. You know, a bit more like in, in things that we are aligned, mm -hmm. uh, in goals as well. I found that very important because, for example, with uh, Bria, I don't think she had any plans to move to Sydney and I wouldn't have any plans to live in the 300 people town that she lives. Career-wise, we make no sense, but for, for her, her career was there. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have aligned goals, mm. you know, um, to, to end a long-term relationship and moving together. So I think goals is a major part now of seeing, like you said, you just see where someone's trajectory is going. And if it's going towards the same way, it kind of makes it a bit easier, yeah. you know. Um, like hitchhiking, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, I said, move over, I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yes, so I think faith, I realize, is definitely important to me. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I was very open to date someone that wasn't necessarily Christian, but I realize now I think I need someone that has the same faith. It will be a very different life with the wise. In terms of dates, I actually look forward to go on like, I don't know, hikes together, do things that there was no makeup, no high heels, no dresses, mm -hmm. just seeing people for the way they dress most of the time. That's something yeah. that I actually look forward to, just dates very down worth. You, you like know? the girl next door kind of thing. I am, yes, yeah. I am. Very natural beauty, you know, like, um, yeah, I love that. I find that very attractive. Does she have to like roller coasters and theme parks and stuff like that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I seem, it seems like you'd be like the kind of guy that hangs out with girls. <laughs> Look, I like, uh, I like, you know, living life to the fullest, you know. So I like yeah. experiences um, for sure. Being with someone that, you know, just wants to be at home or like it's a homebody. Um, it would be a bit hard. I'd have my home body moments, I'd watch a movie, you know, uh, just cuddle Netflix. But I also love to be out. I mean, we live in Sydney, you know, be at the beach, go outdoors, go for a run. Yeah, I need a know, tan. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> come, come to the come yeah. to the east. For sure, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I need to not look like the other Chinese people. <laughs> I want to be white, you know? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And the, yeah, I look yeah. forward to being back in the dating world, yeah. I can't wait for it, man. Um, Harry Jowsey, Abby yes. Chatfield. These are two people who... Aussies in those reality shows yeah. that have taken their careers after, you know, these reality shows, yeah. propelled their thing into the next journey. Um, how do, <clears throat> if you, if you, like, if you're studying them, right? Because, mm. like, you know, we, we, we can look at success in business and stuff like that. Yeah. If you study the successful ones, yeah. what do you find about, like, just those two people in itself? What have they done really well to actually project themselves um, into the next part of their life journey? Wow. To be fully honest with you, I never thought about that. I don't, I never analyzed reality people um, through those lenses of like, what have, have they done that I should do it as well? Um, but what I can say 
from what I've seen from these two people is that they were unapologetically themselves. Mm. You know, like they're not trying to please others. They're just themselves. And I think by just that in itself is so attractive, you know, like it's, it draws people in. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, um, I think another big part of um, at least Abby it seems like she is quite vulnerable as well. Yeah. Um, that's very beautiful. Vulnerability also attracts people. And I think we share that. Um, I also have no issue in being open, vulnerable whatsoever. I mean, freaking whole Australia now knows um, about <laughs> my virginity or previous virginity who knows <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it i'll keep my life private now this is uh, the business bubble patreon yeah. after dark if you wanted to find out where where's more actually you know hey, subscribe and yeah exactly yes yeah, patreon yeah no only fans <laughs> <laughs> see, see how i use patreon and not only fans i saw what you we did keep that. our clothes on here yeah, yeah. i saw what you do that and no yeah. one wants to see my feet or you know yeah. your feet I, yeah. I don't know maybe some people want to see your feet yeah for the record by the way like talk Talking about Virginia, uh, that was would uh, that would never be something I tell anyone on a first date. <laughs> Honestly, like that was not my idea. Just for the record, you know, like yeah, I for many reasons. One, because who freaking cares? No one cares, you know. Like, secondly, because that's not something you tell someone on a first date, you know. Like, you gotta have a bit of commitment, a little bit more, like I don't know, time in the run to talk about that stuff. But anyways, it is what it is. Um, I have absolutely zero issues talking about it, zero insecurities. Um, I don't care at all. I think my position from from that point actually stems from something I said over and over and over again. I don't think it got clear enough. But what I said has always been, it wasn't that I was waiting for marriage. It was that I believe, and that's me borrowing from someone called Margaret Farley, who's wrote a book called Just Love, that I believe that your level of vulnerability of someone should match your level of commitment. I'll say that again. Your level of vulnerability should match your level of commitment. So you make up to yourself what is vulnerable for you and how committed are you to that person. So I am one that I believe Yes, sex is quite a vulnerable thing to do. I mean, you're literally naked with someone. Mm. <laughs> um, Doesn't get more vulnerable. Yeah, than that. it's hard to get more vulnerable than that. <laughs> well, some people will argue that actually opening up about things is more vulnerable than they have sex. But um, then, if you think that's quite vulnerable, then what's what is a quite committed relationship, however you want to call it, whatever title you want to use it, you know? So that's what I said. Over and over again, I think intimacy, vulnerability follows commitment. Mm. And maybe I think that's kind of one of the reasons why it's also like quite messed up these days. Because you have people being super vulnerable with someone that they're not committed to. Yes. And that's recipe for disaster and for hurt. It is already hurtful to be committed to someone and be vulnerable. Even so, if there's no commitment in place. You know, mm. so for me, commitment is, is the foundation um, of vulnerability. Bro, you turn yourself into a bit of a um, like a dating expert, man. Oh, man yeah. <laughs> a failed batchy turned in. It's like people it's that awesome. do life coach. <laughs> it's like it's like a Rocky movie, man. Yeah, yeah this is. <laughs> and right now you're just yeah. going through that training montage. Yeah. Come out of this. Exactly. Where's going to be selling like dating courses as well? For, you know. Yeah, I just hope it works for me. Hey, like, uh, <laughs> I see some business coaches, and my first question is like, okay, well, how many business have you built? You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so. I'll you everything but but good luck with the actual business itself i've never really yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah anything exactly. like that. i just I, I tell you how to do it yeah, yeah. but i don't because i read it. a lot of books exactly yeah, I, I read a lot, i watch a lot of youtube videos <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. it should work it's just following the same thing yes do you so are you going to so what's what's your path then um Mm. Yeah, looking at obviously at, at these guys who've done well taking their stuff over to the next yeah. level being vulnerable yeah um look um i think um i'm a I'm a huge, huge uh, champion of diversity. I've said it before, the fact that um, I got to be the first Brazilian in a show like The Bachelor, um, I felt like a huge honor, to be honest. Like, Come on, uh, immigrants. Yeah, 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 immigrants, you know, it's a show f- by Australia for Australians. Yeah. I got 
to be the one that came as an immigrant, you know? Yeah. Like, so I don't take that lightly. I'm very thankful to everyone that got to make a decision on that. Mm. And I think Australia is on a journey to become more diversity, as more diverse, in, in, especially in the entertainment industry. So I want to champion that. I want to add my voice. And I want to support and be a drop in the ocean for more people. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see more, you know, immigrants, more people that look like me, that look like you, mm. you know, on television. Um, and if I can help in any ways, it doesn't need to be me, you know. I just mm. want to be someone that people go, oh, if he can do it, I can do it. I mean, look at him. Bro, mm. To be, I'm going to be fully honest again. Like, I don't think I'm, I'm even that attractive, mm. you know. Like, I am not the top attractive bloke that they've, would have chosen in no, the past. No, you're not my type, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not the like super, I'm not the attractive guy that they chose to be on the shows, you know? Yeah, the yeah. fact that, that when I got an offer, I laughed, you know? I was like, <laughs> you guys look at me, you know? Like, um, yeah, so I, I, just, I just hope that people look and say, oh my gosh, if Wes could do it, anyone can do it. You yeah. Know? Like, so my, I think I'm looking now into, um, stepping into the acting world, um, I have a passion for storytelling. Um, obviously, we come from church. I think storytelling is an ancient, it's a millennia old thing that inspires people. And I think there's so many stories yet to be told. And I want to be a part of that. I think that can be a game changer, you know, like um, stories that people don't don't hear i would love to champion for example forgiveness you know and you, you know when you watch a movie and that movie leaves you with almost like for example when i watched Bl blindside for example i started to consider adopting oh is that sandra bullock one sandra bullock yeah. one yeah i was actually whoa i was like oh that movie just made me just planted a seed in me yeah that is so so special that movie. you know like it made me con start considering ad adopting now so i wonder oh my gosh what if that could be the outcome of something like a, i don't know maybe a movie or a series that plants seeds off someone watches and go oh maybe i should call my parents that mm -hmm. i haven't talked to them for so long you know like if i could use storytelling to plant those seeds yeah. i would be so happy you know yeah, I, I had the same feeling when i watched home alone i was like maybe i should start adopting <laughs> really? <laughs> and then home alone oh, too. Yeah. And, leave yeah, my, really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and leave my child at home <laughs> alone on Christmas. <laughs> so, yes. that, so, yeah, storytelling is a massive thing. And I think when it comes to business, movies, yeah. um, I, I think the problem with a lot of advertising these days is that people are selling a product, whereas people don't want to buy something, right? Yeah. They, they don't want they, they don't want you to give them something to buy. Yeah. They they want to fall into a story and they want to actually purchase it themselves. Yeah. Because they find that what you stand for is what I want to stand for too. Mm. Right? And I Exa think that's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that whole diversity thing, you talk about yeah. that, you want to get into acting and stuff like that. Yeah. I, like I, I feel like, I feel remiss if Hamilton fans are going, Hamilton fans are going, immigrants. Say it. Like, <laughs> have you seen Hamilton? The the musical? No. They had this one scene, they go, immigrants, we get the job done. Really? I yeah, need yeah. to watch it. Oh, if you get a chance to watch. Uh, yeah, I would love you, to. You're, are you a musical guy by any chance? Uh, I like musicals, yeah. Like musicals? I, I watched Mary Poppins, I watched um, yeah. Harry Potter in yeah, Broadway. Yeah, Melbourne. Oh, oh, Broadway. Oh, gosh, bro. Two days, Broadway. right? No, Broadway is one day. Oh, they changed it to one day? Yeah. Was this uh, post-COVID? Yeah, there, it was. When, there was, when, when did you watch in America? Yeah, it was post COVID. Yeah. It was pre COVID. They used to have two nights. Yeah. Yeah. So the first. In part, Melbourne, they did two nights. I'm in Melbourne, yeah. two nights? No, yeah. yeah. So, in Broadway, there's a big intermission. Ah. Uh, the yeah. Vault Mode Day. Sorry, spoilers. Oh, no, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, so if. Sorry. Sorry. We should have said spoilers <laughs> yeah. alert. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. So good. The, um, Harry, Potter, the Harry Potter um, uh, musical. Spoiler alert. So in Broadway, what they used to do was at the end of the first act when Voldemort takes over, yeah. right? You leave and then you come back, right? Yeah. And then they've changed the whole foyer, everything to like Voldemort. Yeah, same. same. Yeah, yeah. yeah, same in Broadway. Oh, so Everything's cool. green, it's littering and Voldemort Day and everyone's like, happy Voldemort Day. I was like, what the heck is happening? Yeah, yeah. it's so cool though, right? It's, so it's like part of the experience. Yeah. So I think and when it comes to advertising as well, uh, marketing, the storytelling, the journey as well. That is all part of that. Yeah. Right, when you actually immerse them into that thing. Yeah, you are the expert. I mean, I'm a marketer as well. People, in my bio, was like, I was a theologist, 
Yes. <laughs> I had to Google that word because I'm like, <laughs> what is a theologist? I don't know. I've made zero money with theology. I've done theological studies for sure. That's my master's. Yeah. But I never worked as a theologian. I never earned any money with that. I'm a marketer by trade. I've done graphic design and I've worked as a marketing manager yeah. for so many years. But yes, no. Why um, did you choose theologian? Uh, theology? Um Obviously, you did yeah, Obviously, uh, college. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I always, I was named after John Wesley. He was a, what we call a revivalist. He helped, you know, change history in England. Um, and then I always had this feeling of like, I want to live a better world than I found. Mm. In the beginning, that looked like working for United Nations. That was a big dream of mine. I wanted to, you know, work for UN or work for a non-for-profit in a high level that I could help, you know, um, people in developing nations. Then later, later on, that helped that, that living a better world it started to look more like um, faith, you know, like looking at my life and seeing, oh my gosh, Jesus made me a better man uh, with more kind, more generous, more forgiving, a better human I found. So I was like, oh, what if then living a better world than I found looked like uh, presenting people Jesus? Mm. And in my head, that equal to becoming a pastor. So I started pursuing theological studies to become a pastor. And then after theological studies, I was like, I actually don't need to be a paid pastor. Mm. You know, you're almost saying amen there. <laughs> 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 I don't need to be a, a pastor paid by a church, you know, to love on people. Um, and that was around COVID time when I was looking for something to watch, actually. And um, uh, I was googling and i i found oh best series ever done game of thrones and then i got into game of thrones um and i could not stop binging it in two months i watched eight seasons oh. i was so hooked and I, not only i was hooked but i became the type of people that i don't like to be you know like i was i was um reading about every article behind the scenes, watching everything on YouTube <laughs> that I could possibly find. I was talking the cast on the Instagram. I was like a fan. Damn. And then I was like, I can't believe I became a fan. Oh no, shoot. And one of the interviews I watched, one of the cast members said how special it was for her to be um, in a project that went for 10 years and every six months on year, they would be together filming in Croatia, Spain, Greenland, Iceland, and how they became a family. And uh, I remember listening that in my couch and just feeling inside of me, I, I think I want this job, mm. you know? And then around the same time, I was reading a book by Matthew McConaughey called Green Lights. Yeah. And I loved it. Green Lights, I find, was such a, like a, um, a, like a pivotal reading for me because the way Matthew you know carried his life was was very much <laughs> like a, a yeah. risk taking you know like <laughs> what, what can i lose you know like yeah. so he really inspired me and Ma matthew if you ever get to watch this man i would love to you know shake your hand one day and just thank you for for that but uh, yeah right. <laughs> Ma Ma matthew make sure you tag him uh yeah matthew really inspired me you know to live a life that take more risks and that ended up becoming a bit of a life motto. Math Matthew, after he won the Academy Award, did you see his speech? No. Oh, you're going to oh, love this. No, sorry. I think I did, but okay. I don't remember now. He said something along the lines of, um, he says, um, there, he says, there are three things that I want to say. Like, first one is God. He says, yeah. Yeah. He says, um, uh, if it weren't for God, no, 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 no. And then the last one was like, there are three people that I'm chasing. Um, uh, something like, the, the my future, future self yeah future, something about future yeah. self and I was like whoa dude this is awesome yeah yeah. anyone who's listening to this that is a very very good speech one of the best Oscar speeches I recommend you to listen okay to but after, back to it. after they've finished listening to our conversation um, because I do want to talk about um, number one um, I think that you can do it awesome I, I think thanks that, bro I think that we need more Christians in the Via Dolorosa, you know, mm. the, the the business world, right? yes, the business street, yeah. Um, the I think we have there's the world has this stigma around us, like we have this faith and you know like respect to you know other religion and stuff like that, but w we get the slander, that, yeah, and and we got to turn the other cheek, yeah, right. Whereas so, a lot yeah. of others don't really get that slander, yeah. Right? They go, oh well, we can't really touch them, yeah, exactly, yes. Right? So I think more of us just need to be human and show them, hey, look, you know what. 
Yeah. Uh, we're normal people, man. 100%. Yeah. Yes. And just be in those places. Yeah. For sure. And I think God will just bless miraculously mm. um, when we walk those paths. Yeah. 100%. Let him do him. Like you walk that path and then let him do him. 100%. I think I remember listening to a podcast. You sent it to me, Kyle. You talked about Casey Neistat on Diary of a CEO. And he said that when it comes to getting whatever you want in the world, you can actually get it. But yeah. it just, it's not about the persistence of it. It's about whoever's the most patient. You just mm. be consistent in your craft, right? And then at the right time, God will elevate you. Yes, yeah. 100%. I well, he didn't say that. the God part, but I chucked that in there. <laughs> so they can quote the business bubble. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So he's talking right. about social media. Um, yes. So You're the expert. I, I don't know if I'm the expert, man. <laughs> I just post things that I like um, and I think that people like to listen to. Yes, 100%. Yeah. I, I think when it comes to social media these days, it there, there's three platforms when it comes to this. Mm. Um, the big ones are TikTok, mm. um, YouTube, and um, Instagram. Instagram. All of them have different functions. Mm. Um, one, of my, one of my friends who I had on this podcast, um, Kevin La, who's a Sydney food boy, he actually said that I focus on, on, on Instagram. Like, okay. it's, if, if this is not a full-time job for you, then it's very hard to uh, juggle to all of them. Platforms, yeah. Right? And they all have different ways that you can connect to audiences. Whereas mm -hmm. TikTok values long format. Yes. They want that, you know, like, like you were talking talk about. You, the camera, selfie, yeah. and you just rant on about something for about yeah. two minutes. Yeah. Loves that. People yeah. love that as well because it's very authentic. Yeah. Instagram is, itself is very different. Yeah. It's like a business card. Yes. Yeah? Definitely has that polished feeling. Yeah. Yes. So when employees and stuff like that will look at you in the future, they're going to go, oh, what is that person like? Mm. Or should I work with that person? They're mm -hmm. going to go into the Instagram Mm -hmm. Right, TikTok is great for you know seeing the person behind the camera, yeah. um, and then I think YouTube is more like a like it's going to be the the channel to actually you know sell stuff. And, yes, and, and it's the full branding. Okay. So I'd always say if you're going to do it organically, you'll go TikTok to know who you are, mm. um, Instagram to understand to look at your business card, okay. and then YouTube to actually understand what are you selling. Okay, that's very interesting. Yes. I think I also like TikTok um, unhinged uh, aspect. Oh, yeah. You know, like I just love... Raw, right? Very raw, very like face to camera, very um, no transitions, no, you know, like care about any staging. Whereas I feel like, yeah, Instagram has become a bit like the polished thing, you know, like almost a bit annoying sometimes, a bit of like... I look at Channel 10, how they've, um, you know, they, when things that they post, mm. right? Actually, you know, there's like Portuguese as well, translation. Who does that? You? I did it. I, oh, did, okay. I did all my captions. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I did all my captions and I just wanted to make sure that my, my people could, that doesn't speak English, could understand mm. me as well. So yeah, I made sure I wanted to do that. Except the last one, that was a very long post. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, I think Instagram is quite polished. I, I, I'm, I don't have, I, I do have TikTok and could be something I could explore more. I have had a YouTube channel as well when I came to Australia. It's so funny. So many immigrants have that kind of like move to a new country and films everything because everything is new. Yeah. But now almost 10 years later, I'm like, oh, this is home. You know, like I don't have that kind of, I to things anymore that I I should show this to people back home you yeah. know um, and I also feel like so much of my life is here now that I don't want to be all the time just about showing Australians to Brazilians you know um, so yeah I, I don't know what um, social media will look like for me but I definitely feel like I want to be a voice that encourages people you know that either encourage them or uh, share some bit of pieces of knowledge that I've acquired over the years, you know, reading on philosophy and theology, a bit of psychology, or make them laugh. You yeah. know, like I think we need we need laughter 100%. Everyone, yeah. whenever, like, one of the things that I used to watch, uh, like those, um, like some of those, those uh, pickup artists and yeah. stuff like that, you know, yeah. on, on YouTube, like back in the day, yeah. and they used to always talk about your 
MySpace profile. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and they used to say that the most common thing that girls wanted in a guy is not about looks and everything like that. They always look for the word fun. Yeah, make them laugh. Make yes. them laugh. Humor. Yeah, hundred percent. I was actually thinking about. Uh, well, right now we we don't, don't have access. My MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to it and <laughs> rank, rank your friends. Yeah. Uh, we don't actually have access to our socials. Um, in for another two weeks so i was thinking what could i post after that and the first thing that came to my mind was that i did make the mistake of reading some comments on facebook on twitter during the airing of the show but i'm gonna be honest with you so many of those comments were actually funny like made me laugh and i took screenshots so i was thinking maybe i should do a video of just reading the mean comments yes you know <laughs> it was so good like you got any right now that are really oh i've good? got quite a few yes yeah. like there was pull, one pull, pull, pulling up pulling up that you really love let's see let's see <laughs> oh gosh um where would that be i think i sent to um oh yeah i sent it to to Luke, so it should be my conversations with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, gosh, there were so many. We're just sending memes to each other all the time. <laughs> like it was, and even one of the producers were like, "Guys, let's the meme, let the memes begin." Um, it's good that you have that camaraderie as well. Oh, for sure, hundred uh, percent. Someone said, "How the hell did anyone convince Wes that going on the Bachelor would be the right choice for him? And can they talk to my boss about a raise?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's so good. Someone said, Wesley, I never thought my life would follow a script. Also, Wesley says the same line to two women. <laughs> so true. Oh, God. Man. Yeah. Someone said, The story didn't change. Someone said, I was half expecting Luke to say, Dow. Do you accept this, Rose? <laughs> then watch the confusion unfold. <laughs> like, which girl is he talking to? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Someone said, at this rate, Luke will be bending knee by end of episode one. <laughs> he was almost there. Almost there, yes. Uh, oh, my gosh. There were so many. Someone messed, someone, uh, someone commented, um, uh, someone commented, I, I I couldn't find that one, but someone commented saying, um, why did they put two men attracted to each other on a show like this? How are they trying to restore hope in men? <laughs> and I just seemed to look, I was like, look, we should have kissed in the end, you know, like that would have been good television. You know, he was like, Brad, we should have totally kissed. <laughs> it was too good, man. Like I actually have so many ones, so many good ones. Uh, someone, someone wrote, oh gosh, someone said, when I went on a date with Nella, yeah, uh, someone said, uh, "Wes, please don't write her a note yet." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "This is amazing!" <laughs> oh, look, uh, someone saying, um, "I'm waiting for the moment Lisa makes a move on Wes, and in and she's instantly smitten into a pile of ash." <laughs> Gosh, like people are Fat so yeah, yeah. People are so funny. Oh gosh, it's so good, so good. Oh, I, don't, I shouldn't say that one, but you can read it. <laughs> I will not say that in his respect of the other person, but so so funny. Hey, man. if people want to find out what that is, DM me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good one. That was a very good one. I got a, I got a, uh, uh, a question about how they did the logistics. Um, when you did the filming of the commentary, yeah. Um, at the, when did they do that? Do they do that throughout, or do they do it right at the end? Because you were uh, in the same like blue shirt with the yeah. The, I was always in the same. Well, every, all the boys were always in the same outfit. Yeah. Um, I don't. We we do it throughout it. I don't know okay. if I'm allowed to say that. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, we always make sure that at the end of every week, we kind of go and comment. And recap. And yeah. recap and comment what happened. Because yeah. there's other shows, like they usually, right at the heat of the moment, yeah. when they've just got kicked off or someone just cheated, yeah. then they'll drag them into the other place and then they'll ask them to talk about, you know, the experience. Hey, the dickhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's so interesting because the way it's done, it's almost like feel, it feels like people are like, yeah, 
yeah, people are like, oh my gosh, how come are you commenting on something that is happening right now? Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's a very interesting format. My friends from Brazil are like, oh my gosh, production, reality production in Australia is so big. You know, because for them, you don't get to watch a commentary. You just watch what's happening. Oh, yeah, because they you film know? and then release straight away, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, it's, I think it's a bit like Love Island. I don't know. I never watched Love Island. Oh, okay. You have. I have. Should, yeah. I, should I go on Love Island or hot to, too hot to handle? First, I need to become hot. You are too hot to handle, bro. <laughs> you are too hot for that show. Bro. Oh, amazing. If anyone's watching, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's if right. any casting producer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that show's got a lot of, like, that's Netflix, right? That's international, so everyone yeah. watches it. So on a strategic level, yes. it's like, hey, I probably do want to get on that one. Yeah, take the Christian guy to how far can he go? There's, there's got to be a Christian dating show, man. I don't know. Do you reckon people watch it? I think it could be a bit boring, no? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I guess I guess so. We're we're just too bland. Like we're Christians, we're boring, right? There's nothing interesting about us, right? Put, put a playboy in the middle. Put a what? Put a playboy inside as well. <laughs> 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 no, we can be fun, man. Come of course, on, man. Yes, 100%. of course, man. Like ask yeah. my wife. I'm the funnest person in the whole damn world. Okay, I'll maybe, call her. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> don't, don't don't quote me on that. If there's another TV show that you can jump on, there it doesn't have to be a reality show. What would yeah. it be? Bro, I actually asked producers at one point if we could go. I would love to actually go on a group date that was about dancing. Like, I generally love dancing. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I at one point I was like, guys, Brazilian hips don't lie. You know, the boy can't work and all like show us. And I was like, ah, uh, let's go for music first. You know, <laughs> but yeah, something like Dancing with the Stars would be fun. Um, I think something like Amazing Race. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that would be super cool. But. I don't understand how people jump from reality to reality because um, I guess at least in the dating one, mm -hmm. it's quite an emotional um, toll on you. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy, you know. Uh, so um, I would take, ask me in a few in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Dance with the Stars would be super chill, um, you know, amazing race as well. But yeah. um, I wouldn't do any dating one, I think. Do you have a plan on how you're going to ride this wave? from now into the next, I guess, year? Yeah, that's such a good question. Hey, ride the wave. Um, I think I definitely feel like I'm finding, I, I have some work to do for sure in terms of um, getting giving people a chance to meet other sides of me, you know, that I'm not this super religious guy that I, I think a lot of people perceived or got shown. He didn't even bring your Bible today, man. I'm yeah, like, what? The what? Heck, bro? We're not taking communion? No, no communion. I can't, here, can't man. believe it, man. No, we were drinking bubble tea, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't, we do want to give people all the opportunity, but also, like, I'm not going to live my life based on people's perception. And I do want to find a voice of something that inspires people, you know, something that mm. can. Part of me, on, honestly, I struggle with that because part of me is like, oh, we're spending so much time scrolling already by me creating content. Will I be, will I be contributing to that for people to just be more and more on their phones? This is one voice in my head. Ah. Another voice in my head goes, Wes, people are already scrolling anyways, and maybe you can add something that adds value. So it is a, it is a tension you navigate. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to, I mean, the dream will be to, for example, I don't know if anyone uh, out there would have had this idea already, but man, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of immigrants living in Australia. Not only Brazilians, I know there's 50,000 Brazilians, but even more, so many more Asians. And I think for a soap opera, for example, like Home and Away, they should write in, how cool would that be to write in a character, an immigrant character, mm. you know, mm. that moves to Australia. And that would be so cool. And that would draw even viewership from those countries, mm. you know. So I actually had this great, I, I'm a bit of a go-getter as well. Like sometimes I think, man, if to get something done, I need to talk to the Pope, I will fly to the Vatican and I will find a way to talk to the Pope. You nice. Know? Like I'm that kind of guy. So I thought about it like, who do I need to talk to to pitch the idea of writing immigrant characters into Neighbors and into Home and Away, you know? Angus McLaren. 
<laughs> <laughs> yes, if you know someone, man. It doesn't, I'm not saying it has to be me. I'm just would be stoked to have someone, to see yeah. someone. Like, well, it's kind of like how Marvel branched out, did like Black Panther and then Shang-Chi and all these different. And apparently even the actor from Shang-Chi actually tweeted something. That got picked up, apparently. I think I heard that story somewhere that ah. he tweeted, like, what about an Asian hero? Tw- tweeted, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What, what about, about a, a Brazilian hero? Oh, I'm in a way. Yeah. Oh, I'm in a way, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, he did. So, uh, s- I think way back when, Simu um, texted said, hey, Kevin Feige, uh, when are we going to have our first Asian um, Marvel hero? Or yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Yeah, that went viral. 100%. And then picked up and he got the job. You see? Yeah. I love it. Like, you just got to keep open, like, pushing, opening the path and opening doors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when Shang-Chi, when Shang-Chi 2 can, can come back to Sydney to film, maybe you can be in it. Uh, that's in development, right? Should be. I mean, Marvel's all over the place. I mean, we can dive into this topic about Disney, but yeah. people are sick of me talking about Disney all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, oh, Nathan Give and the guy job. We're talking about Disney again. Freaking oh, hell. I'm gosh. turning off this episode. <laughs> yeah. But no, Marvel's in a bit of a, like, they're changing stuff. Jonathan Majors, just, you know, who played Kang? Are you following? Oh. You, you, are you following? You know, you, he was in Creed 3 as well. Who played Kang? Kang the, the Conqueror in Ant- Quantum Mania. Oh really? Yeah, he just he just got uh, done for I think third third the third degree assault or something like that. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, assault on his girlfriend. So Shut he's been fired. Up and there was a whole nother movie being done on that dynasty thing. On, yeah, the, so he would have been in. Yeah, it was, it was going to be Avengers Kang Dynasty, the next Avengers, like the big one yeah. after Endgame, Avengers Kang Dynasty, and then Avengers Secret Wars. But now they've dropped Kang Dynasty and. Yeah. So that's not coming out. We don't know. We don't know. Nothing's been official yet. Jonathan wow. Majors is not going to be a part of the franchise moving forward. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's poor crazy. guy. He's a Christian as well, man. Like, oh yeah, no. it's rough, man. Oh, I mean, being a Christian doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. But that's true. But you're under a bigger microscope. Yeah, because you are held on those standards. That's true. Because yeah. we got to turn the other cheek. Um, I don't know. I don't know if turning your, it's so funny. I find it so funny that people like. Go on. As soon as you say you're a Christian, they will hold you on those standards, even if they don't believe it thesel- themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I get you. Yeah. Oh, um, and it's funny because in headlines, because someone was a professed Christian, they put in the headline that just to kind of make it, I think, look at a fool. You know, almost like you didn't do what you preached. Yeah, uh, and I do understand that. I mean, following Jesus do mean carrying yourself in a in a certain way, but I also have a fi- I also have this huge conviction that I am not a perfect man at all. You know, like yeah. if I do make a mistake, I will own up to it and I will apologize, just like any human being. You know, yeah. so I'm not that kind of like oh someone made a mistake. Oh, he was a Christian. You know, like I don't have that e- expectation, even like. Look at Bieber, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I I remember when I, I mean, it's not a secret to anyone. And I wasn't hiding at all. I, I was, I've been part of Hillsong for so long. And I worked for Hillsong for uh, five years. And I did Hillsong College. So I had really strong attachments to Hillsong. Um, and it was funny because even like in my casting process, I was fully honest. I didn't hide anything. And I remember talking to people, to one of the executives saying, hey guys, I actually worked for this church called Hillsong. Um, have you Googled it? Probably not a good idea. Hey, I don't think it would be good to be attached to that, <laughs> to have a bachelor from that, you know. So, but I, uh, at the same time, I was not hiding it. I was also not afraid of it, yeah. you know, because I have this deep sense that, uh, man, just like any thing that is made up of humans, humans are imperfect. They're going to make mistakes. Anything that is made up of humans, any business, organizations, or churches have the potential for beauty and have the potential for mess because that's what humans do. So um, I think that in the last few years, Hillsong did go through a lot of mess. 100% and I will be the first one to say um, but all the same, at the same time there's so much beauty in however many years the church has been going on you know so I was never hiding it 
um, and I have this understanding that uh, there will never be just beauty in anything made of humans, you know, because we all have the potential for mass. So I have this kind of graceful, uh, grace, um, graceful attitude towards people, you know, and organizations. So, yeah, I, I wasn't hiding anything. And, uh, yeah, I think media thought I was hiding. I was like, no, nah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell it as it is, man. Yeah, I'll tell you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've said it on this podcast multiple times, like yeah. from like the first couple of episodes. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, go to Hillsong and what? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah I, I have no, like no problem with it at all. Yeah, it's like some guy goes, oh, I go to you know, this club or something like that. Yeah. And right, for me, right. yeah. And for me has always been about, you know, the old, uh, I, if I tell you, you know who it is, but the old ladies waiting at the door, giving you a hug, you know, every day, every Sunday and saying, yep. Wes, I'm praying for your wife. You know, I'm like, keep praying. You know? <laughs> keep and, yeah. And uh, seeing kids running around and watching them grow and people in your age, people older than you, you know, they have bumping, um, rubbing shoulders with um, older more wise men you know and gathering their their perspectives i think church is such a beautiful space of intergenerational relationships yep because we are so quick to just be around people of same age mm -hmm. you know and i think churches provide this provide you with those spaces especially as an immigrant yeah. coming here to australia by yourself yeah man i can't imagine being an immigrant moving to a country and then having like nothing to hold Bro, on to. Bro, hundred percent. The first thing I did arriving to Australia was to go to a church, and it was through church, people in church, that I got my first job, that I got my my living, uh, my first um, living situation, that I met people that were generally, generally wanting to see me flourish and caring for me. Yeah. So yeah, man, it's. I think the community is something that I am so a part of. We yeah. say that it takes a village to raise a child but I would say that it takes a village to keep on living mm. you know like and I am a byproduct of many villages mm. you know and that's I think something I'll always be thankful for um, and I'll always try to champion and support community for sure the Chinese village is always here for you bro <laughs> <laughs> hey, last thing Love I ask you do you think yeah. that you're a picky guy when it comes to relationships look my sister says so um which is so funny. Hey, people look at me like, laugh, Wes, you picky. Like, oh, look at you. Look in the mirror, dude. You should be thanking <laughs> anyone that is interested in you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, but um, I think I, I, am, I don't think I'm picky. I think I'm slow to fall in love. Mm. Um, it can come across as picky. That's cute, bro. Oh, thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Uh, <laughs> but I am quite, I, I am quite slow. I think I fell in love maybe four times in my whole life. Girls that I could potentially see myself marrying, you know. Um, and it's just because I don't know. It's my nature. I'm slow to fall in love. Um, yeah, and um, the first girl I fell in love was brunette. The few girls I had the crushes on was blonde, blue eyes. So my sister thinks that I'm just into blonde, blue eyes. But I'm actually quite open. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm never giving up. I said at the end, never give, giving up on finding love. I'm a happy single man, but it would be nice to, sh to have someone to share moments with. Yeah. It's okay, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll find, you know, hey, you know what? If you want some Asian girls, my grandma can recommend yeah. plenty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's got a whole list, you know? Yeah. So I saw some comments, people like, maybe she should, should go on a matchmaking show. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, man. We'll sort that out for you. Oh, hey, if there's, from, from your experience, if there's something that you could kind of share or impart on single dudes who've kind of, you know, really struggled to find that person. Yeah. yeah. What would you say to them after your experience on the show? Wow, look. I don't feel at all the most qualified person to say. Yeah, if I, they stay single after you tell them this, then that's it's my fault. You, yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a failed <laughs> batchy. Um, and I would say that don't be afraid of um, the risk of get heartbroken. Um, I think not only single men, a lot of single people are afraid of getting heartbroken, you know, and that's perhaps some of the reasons that we put so many walls up, you know, because obviously we don't want to get hurt. Our fight or flight mode comes, comes in and we flight. Um, and we protect ourselves and we put our walls up and we struggle to be open and to be vulnerable. And I understand that and I see that, but I think the life 
can life can be so much more colorful if you are willing to take risks. You know, if you're willing to put yourself out there, as Brené Brown says, get yourself in the arena, you know, and be vulnerable. I think I would much regret not doing it. And I was, I'll finish with this. When I got my, my, the offer in front of me, my email, a contract that I had to sign and had gone through two to three weeks of thinking and finally had someone saying, hey, you actually need to give, a, give us an answer. I wanted to throw up. And I went for a walk and I went for a walk and I started going through in my mind, like all the possible scenarios, you know, like, um, of doing this and being misunderstood or maybe being heartbroken or maybe finding my person and being, you know, forever, happily ever after I started to relieve all the scenarios. And then I think I came down to two things. The first one is we only live once, you know? You only live once. This is so cheesy, but I thought, man, what if in two years' time I get a cancer diagnosis, you know? And I would regret, you know, not having done this mm. uh, just because I felt afraid of it. Um, and then the second thing came down to was actually quite bad. I was like, just fuck it, you know, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, like proper, like, um, diving head in and... Uh, I will leave with the consequences afterwards. Mm. So I think we need to lose a little bit of our fear of getting hurt. And it sounds better than when you say than done. But um, I would say to single dudes and say, hey, look, don't be afraid. Um, do it and it will be much better. You'll feel better about yourself that you tried and you didn't. So I don't know if that helps. I, I think, <laughs> well, if they don't, they can come reach you. Yeah. <laughs> reach you. Uh, yeah. Bro, what a freaking honor, man. This is so good. Oh my man. gosh. Officially my first podcast. That was your first podcast. Yes. I took your Cheers. podginity. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, this God. Guy no did it. longer a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> the podginity. Podginity. Bro, I love you, man. That was I love so you, man. Good, bro. Thank you. So thank good. you. Amazing.